Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. In the previous one, we learned how to earn our very first bond, and how to maintain membership by easily making money through farming. Something that's actually accessible to brand new members, as well as players that are either in the early or the mid game. And today, I am going to show you how to make money with every single skill once our account reaches a fairly decent level, and all of the methods you will see today are going to be fairly easy to get to, with a 2 or even just 1 month of membership to make even more money for our bi-weekly bond. But before we continue, if you like what you see around here, I've been making a lot of videos like these in the past few weeks, and I have even more planned for the upcoming ones, so a subscription and a like on this video would be really appreciated. And if you really, really enjoy the content, turning on that notification bell also helps the channel a whole ton. So remember to do it, or Mod Ash will delete your account. And as is tradition, let's establish a few ground rules for this nice little video. First and most important, this guide is for people who are already in the either early or mid game in terms of progress, and this could even be helpful for brand new players to have something to look forward to in terms of leveling up and making money. Second, this isn't specifically catered towards high level players, because if you are one it means that you probably already know what you are doing and how to make money, but if you still want to learn a trick or two, you are welcome to try them out. For number 3, even though the economy is always fluctuating and it seems to be pretty fucked at the moment, I am fairly confident that all of these money making methods will always stay relevant, and let's be honest, if there's going to be no new skill or money sync or item sync in the game, things won't change drastically. Number 4, remember that these are only just a few ways per skill to make money, and that there could be a ton more but I'm just including the guaranteed ways to make profit that are also fairly safe in terms of investment. And finally, for number 5, the only skills which are not going to be covered are prayer and construction. Because honestly, those skills are just item sinks and you will get absolutely nothing back when training them. So we can scratch these off our list right away. Also, not a disclaimer, but just like in the previous video, for each method we mention, I will show you required levels as well as notable drops and approximate GP per hour, but the GP gap will be considerably big because not everyone plays at the same pace and some methods rely on RNG to make a good chunk of money. And finally, a lot of methods you will see here have been covered before on my channel, so check the description out if you are curious about any of them. Ah, and finally, with all that being said, it is time to learn how to make some serious cash with every single skill in the game obviously except for prayer and construction. We are going to start with combat with and without Slayer. For the latter, we are going to start by doing some fairly easy methods and we will focus on Chaos Druids, which will mainly drop herbs. These are super easy to kill so you won't need as many supplies like food to make a nice starting bit of cash. Up next, we have Undead Druids at the Forthos Dungeon in the continent of Zaya, and as long as you pray magic, there is nothing they can do to you. Just bank their drops and return for more easy cash. And finally, you can go to the Taverlay Dungeon to kill blue dragons as they provide a very consistent amount of GP because of the dragon bones and the blue dragon hide. I would recommend level 70 agility to make this quicker, but it could be a pretty steep requirement for new accounts. So add this to your things to do in the longer term. When it comes to Slayer, we have even better money makers. When you reach level 65 Slayer, you have access to Dust Devils, which you can kill at the Catacombs of Koran for amazing drops and alcohols overall. With 70 Slayer, you will be able to kill Karasks, which drop a very good amount of money and alcables, as well as high level seeds. At level 72 Slayer, you can start killing Skeletal Wyverns, which also offer a ton of valuables, as well as their Wyvern bones. At level 75 Slayer, you can kill Gargoyles, which drop a massive amount of noted items and alcables, so you can also stay there for a bit longer. And finally, at level 80 Slayer, you have access to Necreals, which drop a ton of valuable rune items to Alk as well. These also drop high level seeds and a nice amount of runes. Up next we have magic and the first reliable money maker is the high alchemy spell. Go to the website alchemate.com and look for items that will give you profit when alking and have a decent number for the trading limit at the grand exchange. Other than that you can create the teleport tablets at someone's house with soft clay and the teleport runes. This is not as good as it used to be but still guaranteed to make a very decent profit. And finally you can also create elemental orbs by running to obelisks and imbuing them with magic as these will 
always be useful for players looking to train crafting. Finally, even though this is mostly combat, once you hit 87 Slayer, you can kill the Kraken for some great profit per hour along with magic and Slayer experience. Up next, we have everyone's favorite skill, which is rune crafting. This one is really high up in the air because it depends on what rune you craft and how you get to the specific altar. But because pure essence is dirt cheap nowadays, whatever you craft will give you profit except for mind runes at the time of recording this video. I guess my recommended runes would be cosmic, nature, and death runes through the abyss or even astral when astral runecrafting. When it comes to agility, you have two options. Train on rooftop agility courses to stock up on marks of grace, and after you buy your full graceful outfit, spend them all on amylized crystals to sell them on the grand exchange. And when you hit level 92 agility and after sins of the father, you can get to the fifth floor on the hallowed sepulcher for some great profit even if you don't get the ring of endurance. As for herblore, I am going to save some time explaining this method on this video, and I will direct you to one of my previous videos where I will show you how to make great and easy profit with this skill. Simply put, you need to buy grimy herbs and vials of water to make unfinished potions and sell them back, although it will be painfully slow, but it's a guaranteed way to make some nice cash. You can make profit through the thieving skill by doing pyramid plunder and opening the chest in the middle of each room for a chance at the pharaoh scepter. If you are unlucky though, all of the items you get from the urns will be able to be sold at the grand exchange. Other than that, you have methods such as blackjacking, which will be fairly click intensive, and once you get to around level 80, 85, or even 90, or 95 for 100% of pickpocketing chance, you can pickpocket the RD Knight for decent profit. Just don't forget to do the RD Medium Diary and obtain your rogues outfit for double loot when pickpocketing. When it comes to crafting, you are going to buy a ton of gold bars and turn them into bracelets, either on their own or by adding gems. The reason this is always profitable is because gold bars are also dirt cheap because of smithing training and because people cast high alchemy on the bracelets as they give a bit of profit. Your GP per hour here will depend on what type of bracelet you craft and how fast you do it. To make profit with fletching, you are going to focus on fletching unstrung bows from logs. The ones I recommend are willow short and long bows, maple short and long bows, you longbows, and finally magic longbows. As of the time of making this video, all other unstrung bows will actually lose you money. If you decide to string them, I recommend doing it on both maple bows, both you bows, and finally only on magic longbows. Up next we have Hunter, and I would recommend power leveling up to level 60 by dropping everything you get up to this point, after which you will be able to catch Chinchompas with 4 traps. And then I recommend catching Red Chinchompas at level 80 with 5 traps. You can also try Black Chinchompas, but these are on the wilderness and I am not going to send you there to make money. And if you want to do it in a more passive way, Birdhouse runs will always give you decent profit because of the tree seeds and the nest you get from them. I also have a great guide on that, so go ahead and check it out. After that comes mining, and since this is another gathering skill, everything you mine will be 100% profit for you. You can bank whatever ore you get when training, but I would recommend power leveling with iron ore until level 60, and then heading to the mother load mine, where experience may be fairly slow, but all the ores will add up to your collection. And obviously this is also where you obtain the Prospector's outfit for more experience and for the Falador Hard Diary. Smithing is an odd one because not every single item you smith will give you profit, but I can recommend smithing cannonballs out of steel bars, and although this will be really slow, you will always make profit from it. Then you can make metal bars at the Blast Furnace since you need half the coal you usually require, and finally smithing any type of dart up to Mithril. Obviously there are a ton of things that could give you profit, but in order to avoid mentioning mentioning every single item, you can go to the smithing section on the wiki to look at all of your options. Next we have another gathering skill in the form of fishing, and obviously whatever you bank when training is going to be 100% profit for you. This will be much faster once you get to level 68 and you have access to the fishing guild where you can actually fish lobsters, tuna, swordfish, and of course sharks. As an alternative, you can fish monkfish at level 62 after the Swan Song quest. Opposite to fishing, we have cooking, and first of all, I would recommend doing the Family Crest quest in order to obtain the cooking gauntlets so you can burn less food. The cool thing about it is that almost every single fish will be profitable when 
cooking even if you burn just a few of them. So this method will be completely up to your level and the amount of money you are willing to spend on raw food to cook them and sell them later on. Some great places to cook them would be Catherby and the Rogue's Den for quicker banking. Next we have fire making and this will be fairly short because it will be all about the winter toad. Once you get level 50 you can train here until level 99 and beyond and the reward crates you get here will give you a ton of nice resources. Just remember that the loot scales with your levels so coming here with base 50s or even 40s would be really helpful to your profit per hour. Also opposite to fire making we have wood cutting. And this is an odd one for me personally because I didn't bank a single log on my journey from 1 to 99 as I only power leveled with normal trees, oaks, willows and finally teak trees. If you want a personal suggestion, this skill isn't that great for money making as almost all of the valuable logs can be obtained from monster drops which have actually devalued the skill itself. But if you are looking for profit, whatever you chop from any tree will only add to your bank value. As another personal suggestion, get to level 60 woodcut cutting and 75% Hosidius favor to access the woodcutting guild for an invisible level boost to chop logs even faster, and where you also have quick access to a bank and a deposit box. And for the final skill on this list we have farming and I am also going to save some time here because this money making method was already covered in detail in the previous video. So if you want to learn how to make a massive amount of GP per hour through farming, go ahead and watch that video as well. As a short summary to this video itself, plant herbs whose seeds are going to be super cheap along with super compost and on every farm run also plant and harvest limpwort roots because of the seeds are also dirt cheap and will give you ridiculous profit every time you harvest them. And that's pretty much it. How to make a decent amount of money with every single skill except for, well, prayer and construction. But as I said before, just remember that these are low and even mid level and just work as a way for you to learn how to maintain membership without paying your $11 per month. In the next video we will also talk about money but this time around I will show you how much money my channel made in one month in order to motivate any viewer to start their own channel and their own video making journey. Thank you guys very much for watching, I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you soon.